right now. Joining us now is Rocket Labs founder and CEO, Peter Beck. And Peter, good to have you. Uh, you got a lot of different good businesses under the broad mandate of space, satellite as a service, satellite components, space applications, so many different things you're doing. Where do you want to focus investors in terms of the metrics that they should be most uh, uh, paying most attention to as you start to move towards this journey? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we're super excited, firstly, to bring a high-quality space asset uh, to the markets. Uh, the reality is there's been two private companies that have actually delivered regular and reliable launch. Uh, one has been SpaceX, obviously. The other has been Rocket Lab. I mean, we are the second most frequently launched US rocket today with over 100 satellites delivered to orbit for our, for our government and commercial customers. We're obviously not stopping there. We're also building a larger launch vehicle um, that is, is fully reusable and, and will see us change the playing field once again. But to your point, we're, we're not just a launch company. Um, we, you know, we've been the market leader in small launch for three years now, but we also big build satellites and spacecraft. Um, you know, our space systems group is flat out building spacecraft for NASA to go to Mars and, and to the moon. And uh, we, you know, we also have two of our own spacecraft uh, already in orbit. So I think as investors look at the company um, and, and you know, what to look for is, is our continued execution. I mean, we have a very long history of, uh, of executing against these projects over and over again. Um, something else they will look at, I certainly can tell you, is adjusted EBITDA. You're saying the break even for that is expected in 2023 and then things ramp up from there. And that's how your company most likely will be valued. Um, what are the key execution points that you have to make sure that you do hit that target of being break even for adjusted EBITDA in 23? Well, this is the wonderful thing. I mean, you know, we've already put all the infrastructure in place. You, what you see behind me is a, is a rocket production line that's spitting a rocket you know, off the line every 20 days. So we don't have to do like a dozen things all perfectly to succeed here. We've built a lot of the infrastructure uh, uh, already. Um. OK, what about going to Mars? 2024, uh, NASA's providing the launch vehicle for that. Obviously, the announcement was just uh, just very recently in terms of that. What does that mean for the company and how important is it in terms of what you're trying to accomplish? Well, look, at what it really does show is the depth of the team and the depth of the, of, of the company that we've been able to create. I mean, going to Mars is no joke. That's a seriously, seriously hard mission uh, for NASA to, you know, to, to entrust in, in us. Uh, and also not only that mission, but we have a mission uh, to the moon for NASA uh, as well. So really what that demonstrates is, you know, the level of, of sophistication and depth that we have, uh, not just within our launch company, but within our space systems company. There's a bit of a space race going on in, in the commercial space world, Peter. So who's, the, who's your biggest competition? Is it Elon Musk, SpaceX sending satellites and, and are they ahead of you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, we, we really only look out and, and, and see uh, SpaceX is, is, is really the, the, the competitor. Uh, obviously, SpaceX have been around uh, longer than us and, uh, and have done an incredible job. But uh, I think as, in, as investors look at the company and look at Rocket Lab's track record and, and history and, and, uh, and, and, and compare it to SpaceX, I think um, it's, it's, it's very obvious and, and very favorable. And you can see where we're going. You did say to us back in March, I think, when you joined us about your larger uh, rocket. If you're going to go through all the trouble of building a very large vehicle like this, you got to make sure it carries humans as well. So yep. what are your plans when it comes to actually sending humans up? Well, look, the whole point of the neutron vehicle, um, you know, was is to look at the marketplace here in the future and, and what, what it needs. And um, we've really sized an optimal vehicle uh, for lifting everything that's required in, in the next, you know, next sort of, 10 to 20 years. Um, and uh, included in that is also human spaceflight. That's why it's an eight ton uh, to low Earth orbit class launch vehicle. Uh, it is, is absolutely designed uh, at some point in time to, to be man rateable or, or you know, usable for human spaceflight. 